I've got a message for one of the better GMs in the history of the league who has completely fallen off of a cliff, probably because of bitterness and trials and tribulations of living in Cleveland. David Griffin, from Miami Heat fans and from Chicago Bulls fans, we say, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and twice on Saturday and Sunday. Fuck you, David Griffin, and that bullshit snitch-ass horse you rode in on. The horse, or whatever, probably Ferrari, or some sort of Maserati, or some probably some pretentious ass. Maybe you're in a green car like a Tesla. I'd love to know. I'd love to know what David Griffin's ass drives. Because the news dropped today that the Heat and the Bulls are each going to forfeit their next available second-round picks. Yep. The Heat and the Bulls are forfeiting their next available second-round picks following the NBA's investigation into both teams' free agency discussions with Kyle Lowry and Lonzo Ball. Let me just be very, very clear. Everyone's tampering. Everyone. Gross. The NBA investigated both teams for tampering, and this may be the most stupid thing I have seen ever. Maybe the worst kept secret in the history of all secrets that recruiting free agents is like a rolling, not a stopwatch. That shit does never stop. Like the, the free agency period doesn't end, doesn't open, doesn't close. It's always on. They are always recruiting. Bradley Beal will always be getting calls from Jason Tatum. Hey, bro, you want to try to play with me? Hey, bro, you trying to play with me? That, that is the whole thing. Like the Olympics were one big Japanese super spreader event designed just to recruit Damian Lillard to leave the Portland Trailblazers. That was what that was. John Hollinger noted, I can assure you from my time in Memphis that every team starts free agency discussions long before free agency quote-unquote starts. He put starts in air quotes, and it's difficult for the league office to police it. Difficult? You mean fucking impossible? Jason Tatum, I said, never going to stop coming after Bradley Beal. LeBron basically trying to pitch every single all-star every single day. Okay, come to my wine cellar when you have a random road trip to L.A. Hey, you trying to see my, like, it's like a guy who's like, hey, you trying to watch movies? And he knows he's, he's trying to fuck you? That's LeBron James with the wine cellar. Hey, you trying to come into my wine cellar? How would you feel about playing in Los Angeles? That's him. That's what's always going to happen. Just ask Russell Westbrook. Just ask DeMar DeRozan. Just ask Damian Lillard. That's how it goes. But the NBA felt like they were forced to do something in order to keep teams honest. Yes, losing a draft pick sucks, even if it's a second rounder. But in Miami's case, their next available second rounder, I don't mean shit, is in 2024 or maybe 2028. Chicago's case, 2026. So does this even mean anything? I don't know. So that's why the Heat's only statement on this matter was... While we disagree, we accept we accept the league's decision. Wink, wink. We are moving on with our season and our next season and our next season and our next season and our next season. Our next season. Every bullshit story, every single one, always has a villain. And you know what the commonality is between Lonzo Ball and Kyle Lowry is? It doesn't It's not hard to identify the snitch when you think about it. David fucking Griffin, that's who. When Lowry signed with the Heat about 11.2 seconds into free agency um, in a very complicated sign-in trade, uh, apparently David Griffin went absolutely ballistic because he was trying to go after Kyle Lowry. He moved pieces out, drafts this, trades that to get Kyle all year long. I want Kyle. I want Kyle. And if I can't get Kyle, I want Lonzo. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, bitch, you lost. You lost. So when he cut ties with Lonzo, he couldn't save the relationship with Lonzo because by the time Kyle decided, Lonzo was already out of the door too. Folks, can you smell? Can you spell snitch? D-A-V-I-D Griffin. And Pat Riley and Billy Donovan and J.J. Redick and the massive list of people who have a major grudge against David Griffin and the Pelicans, add me to that list. 
add Bulls fans, add Heat fans to that list. But here's the thing about the NBA. It always comes back and bites you in the ass. Ask the Blazers what happened with the the Darius Miles trade when all of a sudden they traded Darius Miles away and he had a small fracture in his back that nobody quote-unquote knew about and then all of a sudden Darius Miles is a Timberwolf instead of a fucking Portland Trailblazer. Timberwolves will never do a deal with the Blazers again. Like, I tell you what, there is no New Orleans deal happening with the Heat or the Chicago Bulls as long as fucking David Griffin is right there. That's the story. That is, karma's a bitch. And I tell you what, snitching gets you stitches and no trades and no free agents and everybody knows. So good luck, New Orleans. As long as David Griffin is there, good luck. And good luck trying to sign or re-sign Zion on his rookie max. Good luck. Everybody knows Zion's trying to be out the dough. He doesn't care how much money. He can be get that Jordan money wherever he goes, especially he's got probably calls lined up right now. Quote unquote calls, business calls with MSG, Leon Rhodes from CAA, World Wide West from CAA. Come on now. Come on now. Probably two full years before free agency begins, we already know Zion is not going to be a Pelican when that deal comes up. And it is what it is. And that's what we call payback. That's what we call hard, sweet, dripping payback. And payback is a bitch. That's all the time that we have for the heat check. We will be back early, squirrely, for it Friday morning to prep for Warrior Suns Part 2. Do not forget to follow us on social at This Heat Check and at Trista Crick on TikTok. We will be back Friday morning, folks. See you then.